Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an Automation Specialist with the SNE. In this video segment, we will review how Studio 5000 is used for GuardLogix programming within the safety task, safety instructions, and safety tag mapping. We will also review some of the integrated safety functions available with SIP safety drives. Before we jump into our content, ESNE offers online training through YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the ESNE TV YouTube channel for how to applications and other automation content. When working with a GuardLogix controller, the project will automatically create a periodic safety task that cannot be removed. This task will house all of the necessary routines and configuration pertaining to safety only. Within the task, you will be able to utilize safety class tags and it is the only location where you can drive a safety output. Outside of the safety task, you will have your standard logic and the standard logic can reference any of the safety tags, but it only works as a read function and cannot be destructive. The safety task takes a snapshot of the safety inputs prior to scanning the logic. So if you need to get data from the standard task into the safety task, you will need to create a safety tag map. This map allows you to write data from the standard class tags into the safety task, very similar to how the safety task scans safety class tags and I.O. The function is essential when attempting to reset safety instructions, such as an e-stop, that have a manual reset function, or programming conditions such as machine sequence step to disable a piece of equipment from moving. The safety task and safety instructions stand out within Studio 5000 because they all contain a red icon to help differentiate them from the standard objects. When it comes to the safety instructions, you will only see them appear when you are within the safety task. Rockwell has preferred safety instructions, such as a DCS or dual channel stop that monitors two safety inputs and is configured based on the safety function, input type, discrepancy time, and reset. The safety function allows you to show the end device function you are programming, such as an e-stop. The input type allows you to pick the two signals that will be monitored high or low and if they will be the same signal or opposing. Discrepancy time is the time difference allowed for one signal to change state and comparing that to how long the second signal takes to change state. Lastly, the reset can be configured as automatic or manual. Since integrated safety has been improving and more equipment has been utilizing safety controllers, Rockwell has improved upon its legacy and more specific safety instructions. A good example is the e-stop instruction, which can be replaced by the DCS instruction. The legacy instructions will still work, but have limitations that can be overcome when using the preferred instructions. Aside from your safety I.O. instructions, Rockwell has developed integrated safety functions to utilize SIP safety networks. These integrated safety functions allow you to omit the electromechanical safety related signals and components to diagnostics and control via Ethernet. The most predominant advantages come when using SIP safety encoders, PowerFlex drives, or Kinetics drives. These devices prompted Rockwell to create a whole folder of instructions for drive safety. The most fundamental instructions are the Safe Feedback Scaling, or SFX, and Safe Stop instructions, such as Safe Stop 1, Safe Stop 2, and Safe Operating Stop. These instructions are the building blocks for the modern safety system that reduce the amount of engineering and testing required. When you have an advanced safety drives, such as a Kinetics 5700 ERS-4, or PowerFlex 755 with the S4 module, then you can also get increased monitoring functions. The monitoring functions are safe limited speed, safe limited position, safe direction, and safe brake control. These functions do not have any control, but allow the machine to operate in a safe condition for activities such as maintenance. 
In addition to requiring advanced safety drives, you will also need to be utilizing the newest 5069L3 or 1756L8 controllers for these functions. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.